Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm very happy to stand in front of you. You, our beloved donors, supporters, friends of Bid for Life. My name is Namiga Grace Teddy. I come from Uganda. I'm 33 years. I was born in a family of 12 children. Two of my sisters passed away when they were still young. We, stay, we stayed 10. So we went on with our family. Uh, when I was eight years, my parents also passed on by a car accident. They were on a bicycle. A car came and knocked them. They died immediately, which was so sad. So the family had to be dispersed by the relatives, like the uncles and aunties. So my aunt took three of us, me with my two brothers. She continued with my, our education, but she was aging, and she reached the retired age. She was a primary teacher. So we stopped, she stopped, I stopped schooling when I was at the age of 12. Uh, then my elder brother helped me for at least two years. He had very little money because he didn't have uh, a job that was earning so much. I continued with the education for only two years. At the age of 16, I stopped my education and it was incomplete. So when I was there, the, my relatives decided that I should be, I should get married at that age. So it wasn't good for me, but I had no choice. They got for me a man who was a bit older than me, and they arranged the introduction ceremony. We went on to church marriage, and I, I, I got married at that early age. So I gave birth to three children with my husband, but the third child, called Christine, was deaf. When my husband realized that, that the child was deaf, my husband first took the child to Mulago Hospital for medical checkup. So they told, because he was the first person to see that that child must have a problem. So he told, he told me one time that let me, let me take this child to the hospital to see whether this child is really normal. When he came back, he came back when he has changed his face because they had told him that the child is deaf. He didn't want to stay with that child because for him he said he has never seen such people. Maybe he accused me that maybe I went out with another man and got that pregnancy of that child. So we, he used to quarrel over and over. He wanted even one time to beat me that I should, why don't I tell him the truth? I said, you are the real father of the child. He said, no. He told me, if you want to stay with me, you take that child to the orphanage home. As a mother, it was so sad. I didn't like that. I said, no, I'm not going to take my child to those homes. I have to stay with my child. And I loved her so much because as I, as I knew that she's deaf, I knew I'm the, one that, I'm the real person to stay with that child. So I refused. When I refused, he told me that I should go away out of the marital house. I said, it's okay, let me go back to my at his place where he got me from. It was really very sad for me. I had no job. I struggled very much. I even, he wanted me to leave these two children with him. I said, no, I'm taking all my children. So he left me, said, it's okay. I went with my children uh, back home. I stayed with those children that too had started schooling. But getting school fees for them was very, very difficult for me. I used to walk around knocking door to door if they had something to do that I can get, I can earn some money. At times, I failed to get any job and could sleep 
without anything to eat. I struggled very hard to, to see that I maintained my, my children in school, and this Christine was also young. She needed milk, sugar, which was so difficult for me to get. At times, we could, they could even get felt sick, and when I don't have money, I could just make herb. In, in Uganda, we, we have some herbs that are sour, which can chew malaria. But at times, it can, it, you, you may fail even to, it may fail to, to treat that child when, it needs, when you need that child to be taken to the hospital. But everything was difficult for me. I used to struggle very hard to see that I maintained my, school, my children in school, which was so difficult. Not until one time, I was seated in my compound, and one of my child was sick, suffering from malaria. I was there almost crying, <coughs> looking at my child, so sad. I, was, I, was, I even cried. So a stranger came to me. Actually, she saw me from a distance crying. She came to me. That was a beautiful life staff, whom I didn't know at first. She asked me what's wrong. I told her the whole story. She was so touched and she told me, stop crying. Do you know, have you ever heard about the organization called Bid for Life? I said no. She told me, now I'm going to write down your name. You will come to the office and start training uh, how to make beads. You are going to get some money when you make those beads so nicely, you are going to get money. So stop crying. I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then she asked me, do you have a contact number so that you give it to me? Um, when we need you, we shall call you. I said, no. At that time, I didn't have a telephone number. She told me, don't you have a friend? I said, I have. So I gave her a telephone number of my neighbor. After two to three days, they called me. So the, the, the neighbor brought the telephone number to me and I talked to those people. They were directing me where the office of Bid for Life in Mugolovi is. So the next morning I had to go there. But you know what was funny? Even I didn't have transport to take me to the office. Instead, I brought money from the neighbor to take me to the office. Good enough, when I reached to the, at the office, they refunded that transport, and even they gave me transport for a whole week to and fro to the office to train how to make beads. We trained for a whole week, and at least I was able to make beads. The next two weeks, I brought my beads to the office for sale. Ha, my friend, my first money was $50. I was so happy with that money. Very, very happy with that money. God, you keep all this money in mind. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my friend that, that that whole lot was mine. Then I went back home, told my children about it, even my aunt. My aunt was also happy. Also, the children were very happy. And I found them, they were just away from school on that day because they hadn't completed the school fees. And the next morning I went to school, to their schools. I paid in the money. I mean, the, the teachers wondered why I've got that money because I completed their school fees that very day. So they asked me, well, how have I got that money? I told them that um, I have joined an organization called Beat for Life. I'm making beats, and they are buying those beats from me. So this is where I have got, I've got this money. They are also happy about that. So I continued making beats, making beats, getting money, saving, saving. And I thought, when we are still in the program, they used to give us trainings. And those trainings, they also told us that you should make other more businesses because you are going to spend only 18 months, 18 months in the program. That is one year and a half. So I thought, what business could I do? What came into my mind? I started a, a poultry farm with 500 broilers. Those are birds for 
chili for meat. So I started looking after those birds at a period of six weeks, that is one month and a half. They are ready for sale. I sold them off, saved money, and then booked other birds. I went on like that, like that, making beads, even running the poultry farm. And then I thought that that is not enough for me because I had saved <laughs> enough money. I started a pigal project. I started with four pigs. They went on multiplying. Presently, I have ten pigs, the old ones, minus the piglets. Because <laughs> the piglets, I always sell them off. I stay with the old ones. So also that is a very big thing. A very good business for me. And again, I thought that's not enough. <laughs> I thought of another business because you people, I suffered very much, very much. So I saw every coin of mine. I said I'm not going to, to, to use this money for luxury things, but I wanted every coin to invest it in another business so that I get more profit at the end of that day. Then I opened up a water business. Water business is very profitable because that is my daily income business. Every day I have to hold some money out of that water business. I bought a tank, it was so large because it contains a capacity of 10,000 liters. Almost I'm supplying the whole village with water. We wow. come wow. with the Jericho. <laughs> They're jerry cans and fill, and I fill them with water, they give me cash. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, I said again, because I was saving, I said even that's not enough. I also <laughs> bought other two cows, female cows. They are all, they are big enough now, they are giving me milk. They gave to, to two cows, the young ones, and now I'm getting milk out of those cows. <laughs> So uh, we can consume. Remember, I used to cry for even a, a quarter of milk to feed my Christie. But now, sometimes I may say, no, I don't want even milk. <laughs> 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 uh, so now I'm a very successful businesswoman. And you know what? You wash clothes for my for my neighbors, dig for them, doing all that sort, sort of odd jobs, getting very little money. The people who used to give me those jobs are now the one employing them. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a very successful woman and my children are in very, very good schools in Uganda and even Christine, the deaf child, is in a, a school for the deaf in Uganda, one of the best schools for the deaf in Uganda. So she's there. They are all in boarding school. Thank you. So I, I even now, I, I went back to continue with my education. I'm offering a course called Business Communication, no, public communication and management. I want to be an administrator. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank very much Bid for Life because that was my turning point. I'm really appreciating the staff of Bid for Life, donors, supporters, friends. Thank you very much. Very